testimony, the attesting witness of life, as seen in the New Testament writings. Ooh, this is good. some deep waters. Hallelujah. I'm talking about the washing of the word of the most high God. And are the people really ready for the word? I'm talking about the unapologetic word of the most high God. Because I Hallelujah, 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 this morning, the Most High. We get up to say Shema, Israel, Adonai, Eloheinu, Adonai, Akai. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Blessed be the name of his glorious kingdom forever and ever. Amen. Hallelujah and bless your name.
Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah this morning, the Most High. I don't know about anybody else, but I'm excited this morning because when the Most High gives an encore, when he begins to establish some things, you better know right now that the Most High is beginning to really do some things in our lives when he comes with understanding. I'm talking about to truly open our understanding because we know that the word says, out of the mouth of two or three witnesses, let it be established. So he's about to establish how to avoid deception. Y'all better come on and wake up and run with me this morning. He's establishing how to avoid deception. Because for so many years, we've sat in places that we were deceived, whether known or unknown. But we were being deceived because it was not teaching the word of the most high God. So we're coming back with an encore. But we're going to break that thing down into pieces so you can really understand it. So you can have the wisdom after we are done to apply this word to your life. We're going to let scripture interpret scripture. I don't know it's something about when you go into something for the second time. I don't know what you're expecting right now, but I'm expecting the most high God to open up the windows of heaven and pour me out a blessing that I don't have room to receive. I expect right now that I will no longer be ignorant of Hasatan devices. I know that I shall know the truth and the truth shall make me free. So right now, don't come into this, this encore with the same eyes you had before. Amen. Come into this encore with, I got to know something different from the Most High God. Like that onion peeling it back like an onion. Layer after layer. Because the Torah is like 70 layers. So don't come into this teaching thinking you're going to get the same thing. Because revelation precedes deliverance. And the Most High saying, I got to establish this thing. Yes. We have been taught incorrectly for so long that it ain't going to just take one teaching on the washing of the word of the most high God for us to come out of some stuff. Mm. The word says faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of the most high God. So he that have an ear this morning, let him hear what the spirit Oh, the Lord is saying to the churches, come on, Pastor Lucinda Wagner. You are the one who said, Jay, we got to do this thing all over again because it's so much meat. And I feel like you gave out so much so fast. So we're going to slow it down in your hearing. Yes. We're going to slow it down so you can really break up the meat and begin to digest it. This is that meat and do season. What you say, Most High? This is that meat in due season. Yes. Hallelujah. And bless your name this morning. You got to know right now that the Most High is giving meat in due season. And that's prophetic in itself. Because he told Daniel to seal up the book. Hallelujah. Until the appointed time. What you say? He told Daniel to seal up the book. Yes. Until the appointed time. See, the Most High will conceal a matter. But kings are supposed to search it out. Yes. So come on and start searching this morning like the Bereans. Start searching. Yes. You tell yourself right now, I've come to get a word from the Most High God. I've come to get a word from the Most High God. Because I know for myself that heaven and earth shall pass away, but his word shall stand forever. Amen. His word shall not be reversed. You better know right now, his word does not return void, neither shall it be reversed, and it will do exactly what he sent it to do. Yes. Because he's sending his word to come back around full circle once more. Amen. Hallelujah. So y'all need to start sharing this with folks that missed it the first time. I don't know about anybody else, but I'm in expectation. Yes. I mean, I'm truly in expectation. They said when the Most High says something twice, you better pay attention. Like when he said, verily, verily, I say unto you, Lord, Lord. You better come on now. Anytime he has you walking in the double, you better know that you're going to be doubly blessed, doubly fruitful. You better know right now we walking in the double. Ooh, you 
better say it. Yeah. Hallelujah. And bless your name. So I'm not coming to this teaching the same way. And I feel the spirit of the Lord rising up right now. I'm not coming into this teaching the same way. Yes. I'm coming because I know I need to see something that the Most High is trying to show us. Yes. So out of the mouth of two or three witnesses, let this word how to avoid deception mm. be established. Yes. The most I said yes. <laughs> on day three, mm -mm, mm -mm, mm -mm, mm. on day three, and the number three is divine intervention, I come to establish my word. Yes. Because Yeshua said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Mm -hmm. Don't no man come to the Father but by me. And these words are not my words. They're the Father's words. Amen. So you better know right now, these are not Dr. J's word. This is the word of the Most High God that he's come to establish in your hearing. Yes. So come on. Come on, let that fire burn. Let that fire burn. Let that fire burn. Get to a place where you can hear. Because see, the first thing the enemy wants to do is distract you and take out your hearing. That's the first thing the enemy does is take the hearing. So we need you to get to a place where you can hear this morning. Oh, Lord. Because I'm telling you right now, this word that's coming forth this morning is like a two-edged sword. Oh, it's going to cut. It's going to have that New Testament on one side and the Old Testament on the other side. And we're going to walk in the authority of the Most High God. Yes. Because he has the power. And he has given us the authority. And so no longer will we be ignorant of Hasatan devices. For surely we have inherited our forefathers' lives. Amen. And the Most High comes to set you free by the truth. The whole truth. And nothing but the truth. So help, help me, the Most High God. Yes. I come to tell the whole truth. And nothing but the truth. So help me. The most high God. Court is about to be in session. Hallelujah. And bless your name. The King of Kings and Lord of Lords has come to prepare a table before you in the presence of your enemies. Yes. The lies that you have been told. Because see, Hasatan is the father of all lies. He told the very first lie. So now it's time for us to walk out of some lies in our lives. Yes. Hallelujah. So I'm just going to say this. Uh, uh, put on your Holy Ghost seatbelt. Because uh, we're going for a ride. I mean, strap on your Holy Ghost seatbelt. Because we're going for a ride. And I'm talking about revelation. On top of revelation. On top of revelation. Yes. Ooh, that sounds like freedom to me. For some reason, I don't know why they thought, you know, there was no freedom in the law. There is no freedom without law. So how could you think that there was no freedom in the law? Because the law protects you. Right. You ain't keeping no Torah. The Torah is keeping you. The law protects you. Hallelujah. And bless your name. Because the first thing when a law abiding uh, officer pulls you over, you first thing you say, oh yeah, uh, you, got, you better read me my rights. You can't just pull me over for no reason, Mr. Officer. You're going to have to do what that car says. Law Enforcement Officer. So I'm going to need you to read me my rights. And the most I says, I come by this morning to read 5 a.m. prayer their rights. 613 legal positions that you can take. You got a right yes. to freedom. Yes. Hallelujah. And bless your name this morning. You got a right to walk in dominion when the Most High sets you free. Yeshua said, I came to heal the brokenhearted yes. and set the captives free. Come on now. Freedom. Hallelujah. Is in the law. Hallelujah. And bless your name. If you don't know the law, baby, that's the biggest mistake in your life that you can make when you don't know the law. And that's in every area of your life. You better know the laws. 
And especially when we're in business for ourselves, you better know the law. You better know the new laws that they putting down. You better know that the Most High is always teaching us by his laws. He does nothing without his laws. Hallelujah. And bless your name. Oh, Lord. Whoa, Most High. I come lifting up everyone on Facebook Live this morning and ones that will listen later. You have a word for them this morning, and that word is you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Hallelujah. Yeshua said, I went to hell, mm -hmm. took the keys, and holds captivity captive. That sounds like freedom to me. Yes. Hallelujah. And bless your name. Yeshua said, I give you the keys of the kingdom to bind and loose. Oh, come on, most high this morning. Hallelujah. And bless your name. That sounds like freedom to me. Hallelujah. Because I'm going to bind up. I'm going to let you know what's permitted and what's not permitted. I'm going to let you know what's allowed and what's not allowed. How you should actually interpret the word. Let scripture interpret scripture. So I am to give you the keys of the kingdom. Yes. To bind and loose. Because some things that have been taught needs to be bound. Hallelujah. And that word needs to be interpreted correctly. So let's come on and allow the Torah to shed light on the word this morning. Who most I ask you to decrease me as you give the increase. Because right now I got a running on the inside of me. Glory. I ask you to decrease me. Hallelujah. As you give the increase, because you done set my soul on fire. Hallelujah. I'm like Jeremiah this morning. It's like fire. Shut up in my bones. Yes. Hallelujah and bless your name. I humble myself before thee. The word says if I humble myself, then you shall lift me up. So I walk through this word to establish it because of that's what you said, most high. And I will always give you all the glory, all the honor, and all the praise. And it's in the mighty, mighty, mighty name of Yeshia HaMashiach, I pray. Amen, 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 and amen. Hallelujah, and bless your name. So the word says, if two or three gather together in his name, mm -hmm. that he will be in the midst. Yes. The word says, if two touch and agree on anything, it shall be done. So we come to establish this word mm -hmm. out of the mouth of two or three witnesses. So the method style of study as the process of studying the word of a higher Asha, a higher, which is I am that I am in Hebrew, the great I am, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And we seek his guidance and live in a kingdom lifestyle. The Torah, God's teachings and instructions and 613 principles as well. The creator speaks, mother. And then we search the witnesses through the books of the prophets, the Nevi'ins, and the books of the writings, the Ketavins. Collectively, the Torah, the Nevi'ins, and the Ketavins are identified as the Tanakh, or as some refer to it, the Old Testament, which is the only book that Yeshua studied in reference throughout the New Testament. Proverbs chapter 19 verse 27. Cease my son to hear the instruction that causes to err from the words of knowledge. Today we look to the word err, shedan, to go astray, stray, err, deceive, let, make, to, wonder. The Torah testifies numbers chapter 15 verse 22 and if ye have erred and not observe all these commandments which the lord has spoken unto moses the prophets proclaim first samuel chapter 26 verse 21 then said saul i have sinned return my son david for I will no more do thee harm, because my soul was precious in thy eyes this day. Behold, I have played the fool and have erred exceedingly. The writings bear witness. Psalms chapter 119 verse 21. Thou hast rebuked the proud that are cursed, which do err from thy commandments. 
We have completed the Memphis style of study this morning, reviewing air. First, we recognize the standard set in the Torah in 613 principles. Then we search the witnesses in the books of the prophets, the Nevi'ims, in the books of the writings, the Ketavim's. Collectively, the Torah, the Nevi'ims, and the Ketavim's all identify as the Tanakh, or as some refer to it, the Old Testament which is the only book that Yeshua studied in reference throughout the New Testament. 5 a.m. prayer. Now is the time. We shall no longer walk in our inherited lies that seek to cause us to err from, the, from his righteous path. Psalms chapter 119 verse 118. Thou hast trodden down all them that err. From their statues. For their deceit. Is falsehood. Shalom Allah King. Peace be unto you 5 a.m. prayer community. The return. To his principles. Direction for our lives. Is our liberty. And love of the most high. What you say? Alright now. So now. Are you ready? For the word of God, the father of Abraham, the father of Isaac, the father of Jacob. Are you ready for the word of God, the father of Abraham, the father of Isaac, the father of Jacob? You better come on. Ooh, this morning we are coming out of the book of Acts. Acts chapter 17 in its entirety. And it reads, oh Lord, again, this morning we are coming out of the book of Acts. You better come on, Kenyatta. Acts chapter 17 in its entirety. And it reads, now when they had passed through Adipus and Babylonia, they came to Thessalonia where was a synagogue of the Jews. Yes. And Paul, as his manner was, went in unto them and three seven days reasoned with them out of the scriptures. Yes. What you say? And Paul, as his manner was, went in unto them mm -hmm. and three Seven days reasoned with them out of the scriptures. Yes. Opening in a legend that Christ must needs have suffered and risen again from the dead. And that Jesus, whom I preach unto you, is Christ. Come on, Paul. Opening in a legend that Christ must needs have suffered and risen again from the dead. And that this Jesus, I hope you're listening. Yes. And that this Jesus, whom I preach unto you, is Christ. And some of them believed and consorted with Paul and Silas. And of the devout Greeks, a great multitude. And of the chief women, not a few. But the Jews, which believed not, moved with envy, mm. took unto them certain lewd fellows of the basil sort, and gathered a company, and set all the city in uproar, and assaulted the house of Jason, and sought to bring them out to the people. And when they found them not, they drew Jason and certain brethren unto the rulers of the city, crying these that have turned the world upside down or come hither also, yes. whom Jason hath received. And these all do contrary to the decrees of Caesar, saying that there is another king, one Yeshua. Yes. Excuse me. See, when we begin to teach the word of the Most High God, we turn the world upside down. What you say? Whom Jason had received. And these all do contrary to the decrees of Caesar, saying there is another king, one Yeshua. Ooh. And they troubled the 
people and the rulers of the city when they heard these things and when they had taken security of Jason and of the others, they let him go. Uh -huh. And the brethren immediately sent away Paul and Silas by night unto Berea, whose coming hither went into the synagogue of the Jews. Mm -hmm. These were more noble than those in Thessalonica, and that they received the word with all readiness of mind and searched the scriptures daily, whether those things were so. Therefore, many of them believed also of honorable women, which were Greeks and of men, not a few, but when the Jews of Thessalonica had learned that the word of God was preached of Paul at Berea, they came thither also and stirred up the people. Yes. And then immediately the brethren sent away Paul to go as it were to the sea. But Silas and Timothy adorned there still. And they that conducted Paul brought him unto Athens and receiving a commandment unto Silas and Timothy was for to come to him with all speed. They departed. Now while Paul waited for them yes. at Athens, yes. his spirit stirred in him mm. when he saw the city wholly given to idolatry. Therefore disputed he in the synagogues with the Jews and with the devout persons and in the market daily with them met that met with him. Then certain philosophers mm -hmm. of the Ecurians and of the stalkers encountered him and some said, what will this babbler say? Mm. And some said, what will this babbler say? Others some, he seems to be a setter forth of a strange God because he preached unto them Jesus in the resurrection. Yes. And they took him and brought him unto a purpose, saying, may we know what this new doctrine Wherefore thou speakest is, for thou bringest certain strange things to our ears. We will know, therefore, what these things mean. Yes. Oh, Lord. From all the Ephians and the strangers which were there spent their time and nothing else but either to tell or to hear some new thing. Mm. Come on, Most High. Then Paul stood in the midst of Mars Hill and said, ye men of Athens, I perceive that in all things ye are too superstitious. Ah. For as I pass by and behold your devotions, yes. I found an altar with this inscription to the unknown God. What you say, Paul? For as I pass by and beheld your devotions. I found an altar with this inscription to the unknown God, whom therefore ye ignorantly worship. Him declare I unto you. God that made the world and all things therein, seeing that he is Lord of heaven and earth, dwelleth not in temples made with hands, neither is worship with men's hands, as though he needed anything, seeing he giveth to all life and breath and all things. And he hath made of one blood all nations of men for to dwell on all the face of the earth, and has determined the times before appointed and the bounds of their habitation, that they should seek the Lord, if happily they might feel after him and find him, though he be not far from every one of us. For in him we live and move and have our being, as certain also of your own poets have said. For we are also his offsprings. For as much then as we are the offsprings of the Most High God, we are not to think that the Godhead is like unto gold or silver or stone graven by art and man's device. And the times of this ignorance God winked at. What? Mm. And the times of this ignorance God winked at. But now command.
commanded all men everywhere to repent because he has appointed a day in the which he will judge the world and righteousness by that man whom he has ordained. Whereof he has given assurance unto all men and that he has raised him from the dead. And when they heard of the resurrection of the dead, some mocked, and others said, we will hear thee again of this matter. We will hear thee again of this matter. So Paul departed from among them. How be it certain men called unto him and believed among the which was Dadisoi the Aphrodite and a woman named Damaris and others with them by the most high and a blessing to the reading and hearing of his most holy word. Ooh, come on, Holy Ghost. Seven biblical guidelines for studying the Bible. How to use scriptures to interpret the scriptures. What you say? Seven biblical guidelines for studying the Bible. How to use scripture to interpret the scriptures. Many today are being awakened from their spiritual slumber and are surprised to find that some of the Bible teachings they have been given or not according to the scriptures. Mm. What you say, Mary? Many today are being awakened from their spiritual slumber and are surprised to find that some of the Bible teachings they have been given or not according to the scriptures. Today, there are a multitude of Bible teachers, pastors, ministers, religious leaders, and would-be prophets, all clamoring to put forth a Bible message. Some of these teachings are genuine and valid. But as Yeshua, Jesus, warned his disciples, Tamadine, deception would be widespread immediately prior to his return. And multitude of believers will become deceived because of the great importance of the Bible. Because of the great importance of the Bible. We must make sure we are receiving the correct message and not a counterfeit. The pure message and not one mixed with man-made ideas. The full message, not only a small part. Ooh, y'all better come on in here this morning. Because of the great importance of the Bible message, we must make sure we are receiving the correct message and not a counterfeit. The pure message and not one mixed with man-made ideas. The full message, not only a small part. So how can we avoid deception? So how can we avoid deception even from sincere but misguided Bible teachers? How can we begin to understand the Bible for ourselves so that we we may obtain the true Bible message. The answer is not found within man-made doctrines, but misguided Bible teachers. Oh, Lord. The answer is not found within man-made doctrines, nor in man's own understanding of how to study the Bible. The answer is found only in what the Bible actually says about how to study and interpret the scriptures and how to understand its contents. And so, in this teaching, we will look at what the Bible itself says about how to properly study its contents and how to correctly understand its message. The Bible itself gives us some built-in guidelines to follow that when used will help us to study for ourselves and to correctly understand the true Bible message. So come on with the introduction. The Bible itself actually tells us in great detail how we are to properly interpret and understand the scriptures. The, Bible's, the Bible reveals how scripture itself can interpret the scriptures for us. What you say? Mm -hmm. 
The Bible reveals how scripture itself can interpret the scripture for us. According to the very words of the Bible, it is the scripture themselves that define the Bible's own content. And they also tell us exactly how the scriptures are to be understood. Oh, slow it down now. According to the very words of the Bible, it is the scriptures themselves that define the Bible's own content. And they also tell us exactly how the scriptures are to be understood. The scriptures guidelines presented in the teachings are certain scripture passages that tells us exactly how the written scriptures alone, the written scriptures alone are able to correctly interpret scripture through the leading and enlightenment of the Holy Spirit. Oh Lord. In this study, we will observe the direct primary principles found in scripture, as well as some modern day examples that illustrate common violations of these biblical principles. We will then look at some important considerations as illustrated by scripture examples. In the first section of this study, we will see in detail the biblical method of Bible study that the Bereans use, what you say, in this first section of this study. We will see in detail the biblical method of Bible study that the Bereans use. We recall that the Bereans in Acts chapter 17 verse 11 were considered to be more noble because with readiness of mind, they searched the scriptures daily to see if what the apostle Paul said was true. And because of their use of the biblical principle of study, the Bereans became an example for us to follow. When we follow the biblical study principles, Coupled with a softness of heart and readiness of mind, we too will see the same results. What you say? We too will see the same results. We will finish this study by echoing. Oh, I think an echo going on this morning. Yeah. We will finish this study by echoing a few New Testament covets or warnings that we as believers would be well to know. Well, to follow in view of the great degree of deception today. Oh, Lord. A few common sense bases. A few common sense bases. Before we look at the biblical principles, we must first mention a few common sense basic rules of reading comprehension that must be applied. First and foremost, Reading the Bible is not like reading a novel. What you say? First and foremost, reading the Bible is not like reading a novel. The scriptures are not to be read speedily, but slowly in order to study each word in its meaning. This is the reason why we had to go back past the Lucinda Wagner. First and foremost, Reading the Bible is not like reading a novel. The scriptures are not to be read speedily, but slowly in order to study each word in its meaning. The truth seekers are those who will read the scriptures slowly and deliberately to draw out the nourishment. Mm. Oh, Lord! The truth seekers yes. are those who will read the scriptures slowly and deliberately to draw out the nourishment. I'm talking about meat in due season. Yeah. The hurried and impatient readers in contrast are those who read the scriptures rapidly, skimming over the surface. Those in a hurry will not find the nourishment that need they need to overcome and will likely end up being deceived. Mm. Come out, meat! In due season, the complete sentence must be understood, yes. not only in relation to its immediate context, but in its global context 
of all of the scripture, only within its proper context can a scripture passage be applied correctly. The subject of Bible context is so significant and is of such great importance to proper application that it will appear in a separate writing along with the context Come on, Holy Ghost. Yes. The proper understanding of a scripture passage is then found when it is in a full agreement with all the biblical guidelines given within the scriptures themselves. Along with the context, the proper understanding of a scripture passage is then found when it is in full agreement with all the biblical guidelines given within the scriptures themselves. What you say? And finally, we must keep in mind our goal of reading and studying the scriptures for ourselves to become cleansed by the washing of the water of the word. What you say? And finally, we must keep in mind our goal of reading and studying the scriptures for ourselves to become cleansed by the washing of the water of the word, by becoming due earth of what we read. Only in this way can our lives become adjusted and conformed to Messiah's image. And only in this way are we able to study Truly love one another. In Ephesians chapter 5 verse 26. In James chapter 1 verse 22. In Romans chapter 8 verse 29. In 1 Timothy chapter 1 verse 5. In 1 Peter chapter 1 verse 22. Here are two of these passages showing the goal of studying the scriptures for ourselves. You better come on. Here are two of these passages showing the goal of studying the scriptures for ourselves that he might sanctify uh -huh. and cleanse it with the washing of the water by the word. Ephesians chapter 5 verse 26. Seeing ye have purified, cleanse your souls and obeying the truth through the spirit unto unfringed love of the brethren see that ye love one another with a pure cleanse thought fervently first peter chapter 1 verse 22 in this passage that we notice in the above passage that we do not become purified cleansed by knowing the truth but by obeying the truth by becoming doers of the truth what you say? Yes. Notice in the above passage that we do not become purified, cleansed by knowing the truth, but by obeying the truth, by becoming doers of the truth. We become doers of truth when we obey the sayings, the words of scripture spoken by him who is the truth. Yes. But in order to obey the truth, we must study the scriptures diligently to find how we are to apply the truth to us personally. Only in this way can we live our lives as he calls us to do in a manner that is pleasing to our heavenly father. John chapter 8 verse 29, Colossians chapter 1 verse 9 through 10, 2 Timothy chapter 2 verse 4, 1 John chapter 3 verse 22, therefore, O thou son of man, speak unto the house of Israel, thus ye speak, saying, if our transgressions and our sins be upon us, and we pine away in them, how should we then live? Ezekiel chapter 33 verse 10, therefore, O thou son of man, speak unto the house of Israel, thus ye speak, saying, if our transgressions and our sins be upon us and we pine away in them, how should we then live? Ezekiel chapter 33 verse 10. Beloved, Father in prayer, the scripture asks us, how should we then live? Oh, Lord, did the scripture just ask you that? Mm -hmm. 5 a.m. prayer. Scripture asks us, how should
should we then live? We are called to understand the scriptures so that we may then understand how we should then live. But in order to understand the scriptures, we must study the scriptures for ourselves. And so we begin our study with a look at the great importance of studying and interpreting the scriptures for ourselves. Ooh, Lord, this is it, girl. Ooh, Lord, ooh, Lord. Studying the scriptures for ourselves. Why should we study the scriptures for ourselves? Most believers today have heard evangelists, ministers, pastors, teachers, and spiritual leaders faithfully teaching the scriptures. Many would ask, are these teachings not sufficient? Many would ask, are these teachings not sufficient? Some would even say, we have heard enough to be born again. And we are now saved. What more is needed? Father in prayer, there are some scriptural reasons for studying the scriptures that we have not understood what you say Friday in prayer there are some scriptural reasons for studying the scriptures that we have not understood we are called to walk as Messiah walked and to live our lives as he did in first John chapter 2 verse 6 but to do this we must remove the stumbling blocks. Mm. What you say? But to do this, we must remove the stumbling blocks. Ooh, Lord, that's it. Woo. Removal of the stumbling blocks. As believers and as followers of Yeshua, we are called to live our lives according to the scriptures. Yeah. What you say? As believers and as followers of Yeshua, we are called to live our lives according to the scriptures. But before one may live a life according to the scriptures, a great number of obstacles, stumbling blocks must first be removed. Stumbling blocks are those things that prevent us from walking upright in the way while yoked with Mashiach. Oh, Lord. Yes. These stumbling blocks are religious doctrines, which scripture calls traditions and commandments of men. The terms tradition of men, commandments of men, and doctrines of men are the Bible's terminology for the collection of man-made teachings and traditions that men have heard and accumulated over the years. Oh, Lord. These teachings and traditions are man-made Bible doctrines that have twisted the true meaning of Scripture, changing a Bible passage to say something it does not really say. This twisting creates false paradigm, a false perspective, a way of understanding of the true meaning of a scripture passage. It results in blinding a person to the true meaning of the passage. This twisting occurs when men see the scriptures through the lenses of their own doctrinal statements, mostly based on decrees of Rome, or through a faulty interpretation based on their own understanding. That is, they read their own meaning into a Bible passage rather than reading from the Bible passage what it actually says. Yes. Most Bible schools and seminaries practice their own form of essages in order to conform to the practical doctrinal position of their founders and sponsors. What you say? Most Bible schools and seminaries 
practice their own forms of SCGs in order to conform to the particular doctrinal positions of their founders and sponsors. And because many pastors, ministers, and spiritual leaders are produced from these schools, these twisted meanings based on non-biblical paradigms becomes propaganda and transmitted from one generation to the next. Mm. Oh Lord. Oh Lord. Oh Lord. Mm. They become widely taught in many congregations. Yes. And today, these man-made teachings and traditions are widely practiced by most believers. Yes. These many non-biblical paradigms then become mixed with biblical truth and the result is pictured in scriptures to a confluence of two rivers or streams, one of pure water and one of polluted water. These merging of two streams produce a mixture and the results of this mixture is confusion. As we shall see, the Bible has name, has a name for this system of confusion, doctrinal mixture, and it's called Mystery Babylon. Mm. Ooh, Lord. Today, believers are being called out of the confusion of Mystery Babylon and are being called to return to the pure waters of the scripture Ooh, alone. Yes. And so our goal is to properly estigate or draw out from the scripture passage what it actually says, even if it goes against all we currently understand, even if it goes against currently everything that we currently understand. Yes. Our goal However, it's not to properly, <laughs> excuse me, <coughs> excuse me. Our goal, however, is not to properly understand the Bible merely for the sake of understanding or head knowledge, but for the sake of becoming doers of what it says. Who yes. come on, Holy Ghost, when the most has covenant people do not correctly understand the scriptures. They are not able to walk as he walked mm -hmm. in accordance with the scriptures. And so the vital importance of correct scripture understanding can now be seen. And so we must ask again, why is it important for all believers to study the scriptures carefully for themselves? Who Lord? And so, we must ask again, why is it important for believers to study scripture carefully for themselves? The tragic truth is that most believers today continue to believe and embrace teachings from their pastors, ministers, or spiritual leaders without question. Many believers today are not as the Bereans. They do not search the scriptures for themselves to see whether these teachings are true or not. The Bible, however, calls all believers not to believe everything they hear, but to diligently study scriptures on their own. What you say? The Bible, however, calls all believers not to believe everything they hear, but to diligently study the scriptures on their own. The simple believes every word, but the prudent man look as well to his goal. Proverbs chapter 14, verse 15. Study to show thyself approved unto God. A workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Second Timothy chapter two, verse 15. I counsel thee to buy of me gold tried in the fire, that thou mayest be rich in white raiment, that thou mayest be clothed, and that the shame of thy nakedness do not 
appear. And anoint thou eyes with eye salve, that thou mayest see. Revelations chapter 3, verse 18. Let us be glad and rejoice and give honor to him, for the marriage of the Lamb is come. And his wife has made herself ready. And to her was granted that she would be arrayed in fine linen, clean and white. For the fine linen is the righteousness action of the saints. Revelation chapter 19, verse 7 and 8. The reason we are called to study the scriptures for ourselves can be seen in the above passage. Notice the warning. Notice the warning telling us we are to study in order to avoid the shame of nakedness or being found without our clothing of righteousness. Messiah living within us is our righteousness, but the clothing speaks of something that is outwardly seen. Yeah. We are then told that we must learn to handle the word as a sword, able to rightly divide the words of scripture as a sword cutting accurately and steadily. We are also called to make ourselves ready as a bride preparing for a wedding so that we may be clothed in the fine linen of righteousness. We are then told in Revelation chapter 19 verse 8 that this his righteousness consists of our actions of obedience to the scriptures. This last step requires that we have an understanding of what actions we are to do and what actions we are not to do. And this requires much studying of the scriptures. We must first understand how Messiah living within us is our righteousness. We must then understand how Messiah in us produce the fruit outward works of righteousness in us. The key to understanding how Messiah produces our righteousness can be seen as we study the Hebrew word for righteousness in the Bible. Then can this can be seen in Isaiah chapter 45 verse 8. It is explained in Matthew chapter 13 verse 3 and 9. In Mark chapter 4 verse 3 through 9. In Luke chapter 8 verse 5 through 8 and Hebrews chapter 5 verse 13 and Philippians chapter 1 verse 11 we cannot now speak particularly of this except to say that we have written in other writings on the matter of Messiah as our righteousness many believers today are not preparing themselves with this fine linen of righteousness as a bride preparing for the wedding to the bridegroom they are not taught what the scripture tells us about biblical righteousness but are being given the milk of the word mixed with many man-made doctrines and other foolishness. What you say? Many believers today are not preparing themselves with this fine linen of righteousness as a bride preparing for the wedding to the bridegroom. They are not being taught what the scripture tells us about biblical righteousness, but are being given the milk of of the word mixed with the many man-made doctrines and other foolishness and so our first scripture reason for studying for ourselves can be seen in this scripture the simple foolish gullible deceived believe in every word but the prudent man look well to his goings proverbs chapter 14 verse 15 the word for simple and the above passage comes from a root word meaning foolish and deceived. If we do not study the scriptures for ourselves, we will surely be deceived. The deceived believer will be among the foolish versions. They will not enter in with the bridegroom. Another important reason for studying the scriptures for ourselves can be seen as we realize that it was the word of the most high. Yes. The person of Messiah Yeshua himself who spoke the words 
to Abraham, Moses, and all the prophets. You better see Genesis chapter 15, verse 1. Numbers chapter 3, verse 16. Numbers chapter 15, verse 31. Jeremiah chapter 18, verse 5. Zephaniah chapter 1, verse 1. Zechariah chapter 1, verse 1. John chapter 1, verse 1. Drop down to verse 14. Many Bible teachers today yeah. deny this truth of Messiah's identity by their teachings and by their actions in Titus chapter 1 verse 16. As a result, many believers today are walking in partial disobedience and partial deception and do not yet know Mashiach. What you say? Many believers Many Bible teachers today deny this truth of Messiah's identity by their teachings and by their actions. Titus chapter 1 verse 16. As a result, many believers today are walking in a partial disobedience and a partial deception and do not yet know Messiah. But in order to understand, woo, Lord, yes. takes hold, we must take careful note of this one fact. The Most High has purposely spoken His words in such a way that His enemies oh Lord, as well as those not in covenant with Him will not see nor understand Ooh. the true meaning of His word. Oh Lord, help me, Holy Ghost. Oh Lord. But in order yes. to understand how deception takes hold, yes. we must take careful note yes. of this one fact. What? The Most High uh -huh. has purposely, oh Lord, the Most High has purposely spoken his words in such a way that his enemies Ooh. as well as those not in covenant with him will not see nor understand the true meaning of his words oh, Lord. instead they will take them incorrectly Ooh. Ooh. instead they will take them incorrectly. Isaiah chapter 6 verse 9 through 10. Isaiah chapter 29 verse 10. Mark chapter 4 verse 11 and 12. Thus it is only at the Messiah open our eyes to see. What you say? Thus it is only at the Messiah open our eyes to see. Oh, Lord! To know him to understand his word that we receive the correct meaning of the words. Luke chapter 24 verse 16 drop down to 31. Ephesians chapter 1 verse 17 through 18. Thus it is only after Messiah opens our eyes to see. Come on Pastor Lysander Wagner. Thus it is only after Messiah open our eyes to see. Come on now. The Messiah is trying to get you to see something this morning. Yes. Thus it's only after Messiah opens our eyes to see, to know him, and to understand his word. That we receive the correct meaning of the words. Who oh Lord. Who oh Lord. Uh, 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 Pastor Lucinda, this is bringing it down, going slow, girl, but it's still a lot. In contrast, when pastors or spiritual leaders have received the meaning of the words from a Bible school or seminary rather than from the Holy Spirit, they open themselves to receive an error passed down from man-made doctrines. It is the Holy Spirit alone who will guide us into truth. What you say? 
in contrast when pastors or spiritual leaders have received the meaning of the word from a Bible school yes. or seminary rather than from the Holy Spirit they open themselves to receiving error passed down from man made doctrines it is the Holy Spirit alone who will guide us into truth John chapter 16 verse 13 first John chapter 2 verse 27 those who hear and follow these seminary trained leaders must therefore study for themselves. Those who hear and follow these seminary trained leaders must therefore study for themselves. Second Timothy chapter two, verse 15, lest they too receive the same errors, lest they too receive the same errors. Oh, Lord. Mm. Oh, Lord. <laughs> yes. Hallelujah. And bless your name. Those who hear and follow. I to show my most high. I to show my. Those who hear and follow these seminary trained leaders. Must therefore study for themselves. Second Timothy chapter 2, verse 15. Lest they too receive the same errors. Holy Ghost says, stop right there. Mm -mm. <coughs> the Holy Spirit says, stop right there. Stop right there. Those who hear and follow these seminary trained leaders must therefore oh Lord, study for themselves. What you say, Kiana? I to Shuba. Those who hear. I'm talking to the pastors now. I'm talking to the bishops. I'm talking to the evangelists. I'm talking to the prophets. I'm talking to the Sunday school teachers. I'm talking to Wednesday night Bible school teachers. Those who hear and follow these seminary trained leaders must therefore study for themselves lest they too receive the same errors, the doctrine of Baal, the doctrine of Balaam, the mystery Babylon. I'm talking about right now, a modern day Sodom and Gomorrah. Hallelujah and bless your name most high. Ah, Teshuva. He said, stop right there. Stop right there. Because many of you right now have been to seminary school. Many of you have been taught the traditions of men. Many of you don't know anything else but handed down traditions. But now is the time to correct some things. You got to study for yourself. You got to step off into the word of the most high God. Line upon line, precept upon precept. You got to tell the whole truth and nothing but the truth. It's time right now to lay aside all foolishness in the name of Yeshua HaMashiach and begin to let scripture interpret scripture that's what we fought at that's what we air it at that's what we missed the mark at that's what we have no understanding so therefore we cannot make an application we're gonna stop right there because if you're any kind of minister pastor or dang you don't been to somebody's seminary school those are the traditions, the commandments, the dogmas, and the creeds of men. Those are not the holy scriptures being taught. Watered down version of the word. That's why when you go to your pastors, and I'm not trying to dishonor any pastor, bishop, Sunday school teacher. But when you go to them and you ask a question, they have no understanding. Because they done threw out the Torah. They're going off a of seminary. They're going off of what man said and not what the Holy Ghost is saying. 
So you got to seek out scripture for yourself like the Bereans. You got to study to show thyself approved. A workman not needing being made ashamed. Rightly dividing the word of truth. So I'm talking to pastors, bishop, evangelists, prophetess. I'm talking to you. I'm talking to myself. Got a PhD in theology. What? Woo! I got a Teshuvah myself. You better check yourself. You better check yourself. You better check these titles. Because you have become an enemy of the Most High God. When you don't teach his Torah, you are his enemy. You are an enemy of the Most High God. And this is something that I'm not just saying. It's what the word says. Do you understand even all your little prayer meetings? Your prayers are an abomination. When you don't walk in the law of the Most High God, he don't even hear your prayer. So you know you're his enemy. Praying and praying. To a God that will never hear you. The Most High God. He said even your prayers are an abomination. We're going to stop right there. Ooh wee. It's something about an encore. It's something about revelation. Because it precedes deliverance. Because now revelation comes to step off into your face. And to say to you. You got it wrong. Let's teshuva. Take the correction and get it right. Oh, most high. I come lifting up everyone on Facebook Live this morning. All I can hear in the spirit, I teshuva and I turn back to the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Hallelujah. And bless your name. We shall know the truth. And the truth shall make us free. We're on a truth journey. So order our steps in your word, Most High. We're on a truth journey. Open up the windows of heaven and pour us out a blessing that we don't have room to receive. You said if we seek you, we shall find you. If we knock, the door shall be open. If we ask, we shall receive it. And so now we're asking for truth and we're asking for wisdom to make the application to be a doer of your word. Giving you all the glory, all the honor, and all the praise. Amen, 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 and amen. Hallelujah! And bless your name! Woo!
right, all right. Um, Adrian Gordon, girl, you put something profound in the atmosphere, beautiful one. You said, we are all, all capital letters, now accountable, all capital letters. We are all now accountable. Bless you. Wow. Wow. So the first time we went through the teaching, <laughs> the most high will set you up. Woo, the most high will set you up. The first time we went through this teaching, it was for knowledge and understanding. We know knowledge is information, so we got the information. We know understanding is comprehension, so we comprehended the thing. So now he came back for pastors, evangelists, prophetess, bishops that are listening to this word and through the mouth of Adrian Gordon, let it be established, we are all now accountable. What you say? We are all now accountable. So as we go further in this teaching, you're going to truly sit yourself down and understand to make an application on letting scripture interpret the scriptures and how to avoid deception. Now this thing is personal. Oh, Lord most high. He done made it personal, Pastor Lucinda Wagner. This is to the teachers that are teaching my word. Now we all are accountable. Yes. All right, Adrian Gordon. Oh, Lord. Oh, we. Yeah. He came to establish this thing on how to teach his word to people out there that are teaching his word. And he came to correct you. Wow! Won't the Most High set you up? You think you're just coming back for a little encore. Yay! That was so good. You know, sometimes in an encore, you even give a standing ovation. That was so amazing. No! He's come back for you. Who's teaching his word. Let scripture interpret the scriptures. We are all now held accountable. Don't you move. You better come on back here tomorrow. You can't move now. And guess what? <laughs> we always been responsible. But the problem is. Nobody ever held us accountable. So thank you, Adrian Gordon, that all these titles that we hold, bishop, pastor, evangelist, prophetess, oh, you're responsible, but nobody ever held you accountable. So guess what? The word is going to hold you accountable. Not Dr. J. The word is holding you accountable. If you're going to teach his word, you teach it correctly, rightly, dividing the word of truth. Oops, come on back in here. Day four tomorrow. Day four tomorrow. Oh, this thing just got really real. What you think? <laughs> you been set up by an encore. This is for you, pastor. This for you. It is. This for you. This is for you, Sunday school teacher. Look at you, little Wednesday night Bible school study. Tomorrow night, I know y'all gonna be teaching Bible study. We come to help you. We are all walking our correction together. So I to Shuva. I to Shuva. I to Shuva. Oh, Lord. All right. So get to the blog spot, get to Facebook, get to YouTube. It will encourage you. Y'all share this video. Tell them to come. This is going to be a long ride. We're going to stretch this thing out for about two weeks to make sure we get it. Since we all now are accountable. Thank you, Adrian Gordon. See, that's ain't better coming from you, girl. Because when Dr. J hold folks accountable sometimes, they just be like this. 
what? I don't even understand what you're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> but you got that responsibility, though. I'm just holding you accountable for what you're responsible for. I don't get it. <laughs> so thank you, Adrian, that it came from you and not me. We are all now accountable. Oh, Most High, you know how to get them. Thank you. Thank you, Most High. I love when the Most High get folks. I ain't got to get you. You have been got. As Pastor Lucinda said on Sabbath, you have been served. Uh-oh. <laughs> Uh-oh, you have been served. Now, you know everything that the Most High does, he does it legally. So right now, a subpoena is going out to every bishop, pastor, evangelist, prophetess. There's a subpoena, a spiritual subpoena that's going out. And guess what? You've been served. And if you don't show up, there's going to be a bitch warrant put out for you. <laughs> you been served. You better get that subpoena. Excuse me. They're going to knock on your door and say, are you, are you Bishop so-and-so? Yes. You've been served. <laughs> knock, knock. Pastor, are you Pastor so-and-so? Yes. You've been served. Wow. So this morning... A subpoena went out to every teacher that's teaching the word of the Most High God. And I need to tell you, you've been served. All right. So get to the blog spot, get to Facebook. It will encourage you. Get to YouTube. Have a supernatural day three. You've been set up. I love it. Have a, don't be scared. You're going to be all right. Have a supernatural day three. Divine intervention. I love you, love you, love you. Oh, I love you. I love you. Bye now.